Ladies and gentlemen, we are back on the hunt for a missing person today. You guys may remember we posted a video, I think it was back in June or July, about a young man named Dylan Rounds who went missing out in the West Desert of Utah, on the uh, far west side of the Great Salt Lake. Well, his case, as we all kind of knew it would, garnered a lot of attention. People have been watching this case very closely because it doesn't add up. There are so many things that don't make sense. And since he's been missing since I think the end of May and there's still no sign of him, the police, the FBI, tons of different agencies have gotten involved. And I can't speak to what their actual investigation consists of because I don't know. But again, like I said, this has become a case of just no answer questions. But everybody wants to help and wants to find Dylan. It's just, it's, it's a rough spot. Since it's so far away from everywhere, law enforcement doesn't reach you know, very far into it. And I gotta, I gotta take back some things I said in my very first video about this. Montello, Nevada, uh, I made some general statements about it being kind of a dark, dirty, bad place. That's not the case. And I didn't mean it that way. The majority of the people that live out in Lucin and Montello in that area are good people that in fact, they moved out there because they don't wanna be bothered by people. They just wanna be alone. And so, you know, certain bad people and, and bad situations take advantage of that. And that's kind of what's led Dylan's case to becoming such a nightmare. So we're headed out there right now. We're gonna fly out in a helicopter that you may not recognize unless you follow, you know, our buddy, the muscle on Instagram, then you definitely recognize it. But this is his brand new helicopter. And since I always fly my helicopter everywhere for everything for the last five years, I figured it's time for a change of pace. So I'm taking his, he's out of town. We're gonna jump in his uh, Eurocopter AS350, uh, now made by Airbus, but it's basically A-Star, high performance, six passenger helicopter, super cool. Um, we're gonna take it out there and meet up with Hans and Alan and Cooper and the rest of the guys. Money, 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 money. money. You got my money? Uh, no money means no cherry Coke, which means not Why a good day. For us, not for him. So yeah, yes, that's, that's for us. I get grumpy to meet up with a couple of guys that have been kind of leading uh, their own searches out there. A guy named Lance from Earthworm Entertainment has a YouTube channel and his friend Ty Corbin. These are both uh, locals who live out there who have become very interested in the case. They know a lot about the case and they've been searching nonstop, like, you know, two, three, four times a week ever since Dylan went missing. So they have a mine that they would like us to search. They haven't been able to because they haven't had, you know, the climbing and repelling gear and all the stuff, all the gear, equipment, and um, experience that we have. So we're gonna head out there, drop down on the mine, get a better idea of where they've looked, what they're looking for, and why they think this is an area of interest. But for us, we want to help try to bring closure to Dylan Round's family because losing a 19 year old kid in the desert with no answers sucks. Sucks really bad. Meet Dave. Dave's a hard-working, God-fearing, blue-collar man that does whatever it takes to get the job done. Whether it's working out the burning sun, turning wrenches, or bending red-hot steel, Dave gives his all in all that he does. However, Dave's hard work doesn't come without a price. You see, Dave has a problem. It's a problem that many hard-working men face. Dave stinks. Dave smells so bad that when he walks by, the skunks get high. A stench so powerful that he has to creep up on his own bathwater. This man has a three-pack-a-day habit, and I'm talking about odor eaters. Until now, Dave had no hope of ever not smelling like a red lobster on Father's Day. And then, along came an unexpected hero. A hero of beastly proportions. Dr. Squatch. You see, Dr. Squatch is changing the personal hygiene game by offering products that are not only natural, good for you, but they also smell great. Hey, Camino's got oysters, let's go. Not until you meet Dr. Squatch. Hey, go take a bath. Wood barrel bourbon scent, my favorite. Here's the thing, Dr. Squatch has a full lineup of all sorts of different hygiene products. They've got deodorant, shampoo, conditioner, toothpaste, soap, and the list goes on and on. You see, they never use any harsh chemicals or ingredients. Everything they use is natural and all their scents are inspired by nature. Hey, under the arch, under the arch. Ah, I smell so clean and so fresh, and you could too. All you gotta do is click the link right here below, use promo code DSQHEAVYDSPARKS, and you could get 20% off any order $20 or more. You could smell as good as me. Trust me, your lady's gonna love it. So, if nothing else, if we don't find anything today, 
uh, we're going to continue to raise awareness of Dylan's case and hopefully, you know, create more leads because we're not done. We're just getting started with this. So uh, we're gonna pile in the helicopter, fly straight over the Great Salt Lake uh, into no man's land. So buckle up. Thanks for meeting us out here. It's cool. Yeah. Meet you, man. All right, guys. So we just landed out here in where are we technically? Mon kind of Montello area. Uh, yeah, even though we're still in Utah. Bald Eagle Mountain. Correct. Bald. Okay, Bald Eagle Mountain. This is a mining district. Uh, silver, gold mine, something like that. I think everything. Yeah. yeah. And we're meeting up with Mr. Ty Corbin and Lance Kelly. Lance has a, a YouTube channel called Earthworm Entertainment, and you guys have been doing a lot of searching for Dylan. Uh -huh. So we've come out once. Obviously, we did a quick aerial search and the story didn't add up that we received that day. So, you know, we hadn't come back out because we were waiting for more information. You guys have been boots on the ground a lot out here, so. We got involved basically when the community said that they weren't gonna help because of some things that Candace said and we didn't think that that was right, that they should understand her child was missing. Right. And nobody would help, so we knew the layout of the land. And the day- you come out here. Correct, you, 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 32 years. You used to live right in Montello, now you live a little bit outside yeah, of town. I used to live, uh, I used to live right out about two and a half miles west of Montello above okay. the water tanks. Yeah. We see this whole situation is you have to help your neighbors do yeah. the right thing. Yeah. We're not interested in the money or any of that. We're doing it because it's the right thing to do. Right. You've been doing a lot of it a couple yeah. times a week, a few times a week. So yeah. you've covered a lot of ground because you know the area. So where have you guys searched kind of the main areas and where are the areas of interest still? So the very first thing that we knew is this is a really huge area mm -hmm. and all we could concentrate would be on high probabilities. Right. This area, you guys, we believe is a really high probability because his cabin that burnt down is just over this hill and he can see this whole area. So when he, I'll, uh, I'll kind of interject and kind of help fill in the gaps here in the story. When he says he, he's talking about Brenner. Jim Brenner. Uh, he's the guy who was staying in the building where the grain barn was, where Dylan, was last seen and heard of and Jim is essentially the main person of interest as of right now he's in custody on unrelated firearms charges but he had a cabin I guess up here yes, in these hills uh, just to give you some idea of where we're at Dylan's old farm where he was living and staying and the grain shed and everything in Jim's place is maybe five to ten miles yeah. as the crow flies over the hill and, there and so here's that way another thing that makes this area special you guys up and over this hill mm -hmm. there's a road that leads right down to the TL bar road and it's only about eight miles from Lucin to the bottom. So not only was it accessible from Jim's side, mm. but over on the Lucin side, and I'm sure he knew both. Was Jim staying in the cabin? Did he live there? For a while, ago. yeah. Okay, not recently. When yeah. Dylan went no. missing, he was staying over by the grain right. shed. And the gotcha. area is still accessible from over there at the grain shed. Gotcha. And when we get up on the hill, you'll see the road that goes down to the TL bar. Yeah. So it's a high probability area. And he's bragged about this area and having bunkers so really we'll see what he does um i'd been told that ty and lance have spent a ton of time out here and i saw some of their youtube videos and also because they seem to be the most some of the most level-headed people out here as far as the way you're approaching this thinking about it you guys are less interested in the drama surrounding this whole thing and more right. interested in just hey what can we do to help right. find these guys but one channel in particular that i think is based out here has said some negative things about you guys um for no apparent reason yeah. as far as from what everything i've seen um and i think those people may have ties to the community or certain people in the community what i haven't seen is you guys going to youtube and saying this person's that that person's this and you know just dragging people through the mud just try to ignore where it. your names have been which is interesting because there's always resistance against somebody who's on the right track and that's kind of what led us to you guys and i believe that you guys are doing a really good job probably the best job out of anybody i think when bombers get over target they take a lot of flack and that's yeah. what's going on exactly so. when i first talked with ty and lance i mentioned that this would not be our only search with them we wanted to team up with them to figure out what areas they've covered what areas they haven't been able to get to yet and what resources they need to be able to get into those additional areas and one thing they need is 
people with uh, the resources, the uh, equipment, and the experience to get down in the mines, which we have, obviously. Um, Alan's over there just licking his lips, just as <laughs> <just, laughs> excited as could be. We've got some these fun, interesting of them on the way up. So. Yeah, there's a lot of, even just flying in, there was way more, there's a lot of activity in these hills that I didn't even realize. That there's, I mean, literally, like, there looks like an old tram line that ran right. down that way. I'm seeing holes and A-frames. And the thing is, this is such a remote area that not a lot of people come out here to explore. It's mostly the locals, like, you right. know, Jim. So, anyways, the plan, guys, today is to search some areas, some mines of interest, get down in the holes where potentially a body could have been thrown, and uh, either find Dylan or clear those holes and say, nope, he's not here. Let's shake move on to the next one. Yeah, yeah. Shake it up. So just basically kind of be creating a grid. And if we don't find him today, we still have plans to come back out here and do more searching with these guys. Maybe it's here on the mountain. Maybe it's out on the causeway that goes to the Great Salt Lake. There's a million different places that uh, Dylan could be if he was, you know, uh, taken and, and killed and disposed of. So. This is the horizontal shaft that intersects the vertical shaft, which is kind of right off the road here. So if, if, if somebody would have been driving along that top ridge line, the holes right next to the road, could have tossed a body in there, could have come down here. So rather than going in the top of the vertical, we're going in the horizontal, which is going to save us 100 feet of repelling. And tying a rope to this rock to drop it down to see if we can get an idea on how deep the water is. So, you go next, okay. So. searching for Dylan? Uh, probably, I don't know, the last four months. So we had like probably 160 videos up, I think. We were helping out with the food bank in town and his dad was there kind of trying to talk to people, asking you know if anybody had seen anything. So we organized like the first search over here on Nevada with him, hoping we can find him. Just that's it. Hopefully bringing closure to the family and that's, that's why I'm doing it. Just, you know. All right, so we are in the um, we're in the first area of interest, and like we said, there is a vertical opening above us. If you look right up there, um, you'll see the vertical probably air vent for this mine, and it's kind of like Alan said about 80 degree angle up to it. So there's potential that somebody could have thrown a body in through that opening, which was open as of last week, and it tumbled down these rocks 50, 75 feet down into this pit which you can see it is pure abyss just uh, a lot of water and it looks it's hard to say because it could be murky but it kind of looks deep i don't see a bottom and this is kind of a high penetrating uh, flashlight so um, the thing about bodies in water is when they go in water they sink and then once they start to decompose they bloat and they rise to the surface once they're on the surface for a little while, the bloating will either pop or settle or, you know, animals will get to it and it'll sink again. So we're using a very uh, high tech way of measuring <laughs> the rock on a string. So. These mines are wild. wild. These are old. People haven't been here in a long time. This is not a very well-known area. So we're finding there's a lot of old relics in here that you wouldn't normally find in mines that are heavily trafficked because people come in and grab them the souvenirs and these were like very low budget mines. You can tell these are just like, um, they came in and just did the bare minimum to be able to search for the minerals. This is about as real as mines get. You got it? More. I need more. Yeah, yeah I, get I, it. I don't have any more. Just want to make sure you had it before I let go. Is it still going? No. It's no. about 10 feet, but the it goes in an incline, so I keep hitting. If I put it over there, it's only a couple feet. It's cool. <laughs> <You> might. <laughs> if that if that follows the same contour as this, it would be running down at an angle. 
because it looks like the vein that they were following right there. Um, Eric, if you can see here on the, on the wall, the whole shape of this pocket here is like that. That's a vein of minerals that they were chasing. And you can see above us, they carved out the bulk of that because that was probably full of, you know, whatever minerals they were looking for. So that's why it's at like a 80 degree angle. So my guess is that that probably does end. It's only about 10 feet deep. Um, Cause if it was deeper, this room would be bigger. I don't think we can necessarily check this mine off the list yet until we come back with some underwater cameras, maybe some under, I've had some companies reach out to us and want to send us underwater like robots and drones. And I might actually uh, follow up with them because the more we get into this stuff, the more we're going to need that type of equipment. So uh, we're not going to jump in that hole and dive in it. That's not safe. Uh, this is definitely something that we were not fully expecting. So we were hoping to come find dry bottom mine shafts like this, which is, we can clear really quickly and easy, but it's definitely intriguing. What do you think Al? Well, there doesn't seem to be any real large objects at the bottom, but there's bunches of soft spots. Well, the GoPro has got a light on it. Yeah, we got this flashlight mounted to this safety strike, I think. Uh, small little company sent me this. Uh, they build lights for firefighters and it's designed to clip onto like a firefighter's jacket and it's like a very intense beam. And I think he said it was waterproof, but I can't remember, so we're gonna find out right now. I brought a spare just in case. Just kind of give our viewers an idea of what we're looking at. Okay, and we'll be able to take a nice little look at the uh, footage too. We're going the extra mile for you guys here. Hooked the GoPro to the flashlight that we just found out was waterproof, and now GoPro's waterproof. No pressure, Alan. Oh yeah, that's a shot right there, look at that. Floodlight <laughs> rather than a, <laughs> a laser beam. Yeah. Surprised that didn't heat the water up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, there's a shot for you guys to understand, get a better idea of what we're looking at. This hole, I think we can safely say, is clear. Right? I would say so. We are going to head out to the next one. is still wet and uh as we were flying over the lake bed there was standing water everywhere so it definitely dumped and there's some still storm clouds still lingering so well, I think that's why the that head hole. of that one yeah caved in you can tell it's just been washing out all along top of it which you can't really see uh, up close. We saw it from the other side over there. Is this a horizontal, vertical? Horizontal, horizontal, horizontal with the vertical. the vertical in it. All right, mine entrance number two. This one is another horizontal that leads to another vertical shaft. Do, we, do you know where the vertical opening is? Is there a hole up top? 56, no, the vertical goes down. <laughs> the vertical surface. There's no air vent to the surface. Okay. So the theory behind this one would be that um, somebody would have either found a vertical opening on the top, which they say they are not sure if there is one, or hauled it in through the horizontal, which is also probable. Um, we're also learning that Jim, the main suspect, had a horse. So that could have made this project a little easier. 
Uh, so where's the horse now? I think that Kurt sold it. You can investigate the horse. Oh, we could have talked to it, man. Learned a lot from the horse. And I'm in. I think. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. What's that? Probably 50, 60 feet down right there, so I would stay on my side. even worth looking at though because if it was Jim, Jim didn't have the ability to climb down there and climb back out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you see they're going to rig a rope around all three logs to give them the most strength possible to be able to drop themselves down into that hole. You got it, big out. Good to keep going. Keep going down. Keep going down now. I've got my weight on the rope. Alrighty. Okay, you're on. Coming down. Your okay, you can let go of the thread. You want a helmet on now? You want to use it? That last one. It was funny, ain't it? This one, yeah. Sorry. I'll look. Okay. I see something behind me, but let me get off the rope first. The entrance way dead end is only like about eight feet. Both ways? Now, the other way, there's like a decline that's about like a 35, but it's all filled up with dirt from a horizontal. Get some better light in here. Yeah, it's looking at real estate down there. How's it look for a bunker? Uh, we have a little Pepsi can right here. Well, time for me to go back up. There's nothing down here. All right, you look for a way out. We'll meet you in the next one. What was that? Nothing. <laughs> This is one of the most interesting mining ranges I've seen uh, because there's tons of tiny, tiny little holes. Um, and then there's an open pit at the top. And then there's like the old um, tram. Weather and rain caused this to change so much. I mean, even just the storm last night caused the last uh, mine that we were looking in to cave in. Our main concern is figuring out how much has changed in the last, what's it been? Dylan's been gone since June, July, August. Dylan's been gone three and a half, almost four, probably four months. So um, we're looking for recent changes. It's crazy, man. It's a needle in a haystack and it's, it's super frustrating when you have no leads. And especially when there's a guy, you know, currently in custody, this Jim Brenner guy who is the most likely suspect and he's just in jail, not talking to anybody. Man, so frustrating. Can only imagine how Dylan's poor family feels. currently smack dab on the top of the mountain that splits Lucin and Montello. Montello's over there, Lucin's over here, which is where Dylan lived. Now, this road that we're about to follow is the road that goes straight down towards Dylan's property. So we're gonna backtrack and see if there's any vertical shafts or anything that we can uh, look into in areas that haven't been searched. So, because this would be the most probable route, because it's the only route really to be able to get to the top of this mountain and to the other side from Lucin. So that's what you're gonna see us do right now. We're gonna go down, kind of scout it out, see if there's anything worth looking at, and then on the way back up, we'll probably explore. Right over that way, that direction is kind of northeast. Uh, Salt Lake is way over there. Dylan's farm is kind of right there in that cloudy patch. That's the area where he went missing from. Now the only road from basically there to the mountains that we were just in is this one that we're on right here. Follow this road and if you turn around that way, that's where we just came from, basically the top of that mountain. And so uh, if the theory of him being in a mine shaft is true, there's no mines down here low. They don't start until you get further up the hill. So basically we wanted to get low enough to kind of where the below the line of the mine was. And now as we work our way back up, we're gonna be able to spot out any more of those vertical shafts that uh, 
are kind of close to the road or that would be you know a good candidate for um for somebody to dump a body so we're gonna head back up where we came from and uh, look for any major openings but it's looking pretty ominous out that direction uh towards dylan's place it's kind of crazy This still has the um, track in it, right there below you. Alan's gonna lose his mind. Mine is usually used for two things. One, bodies and uh, outhouses. That dirt all looks recently pushed yeah. down there, doesn't it? Yep. I mean, really recent. Look at that. Yeah. Look at the discoloration. Yep. That's kind of interesting. Basically, this was designed to fill the ore carts. So whatever they were doing up in there, they were just shoveling down here, and it would just pile off into the ore cart, and they'd track it out. But what's weird is either this just recently slid for on its own, or Somebody, because you can see how the dirt's still all dark and then dry, dark and dry. This has been recently moved. Follow that shoot up. You going? This just looks very freshly mined. That ends up there. Huh. Can't really do this justice, but this is probably about a 45 degree incline. And it just working its way up there, following some sort of mineral vein. It appears to be somewhat freshly disturbed. And like, some of these rock chips where they were chipping away at that stuff. Looks like it was just recently hit with a pickaxe or something, so not sure. And a carbide drill. So it's a newer drill. It's not ancient at all. So it's got the carbide. Yeah, it seems like somebody's been prospecting this. Yep. Here we come. Uh, I got me a new wizard staff. <laughs>
my friends. That's it for the day. We just landed back here in Bountiful after spending the whole day out there in the Lucent Montello area. As you saw, we searched a lot of different mines, a lot of different areas. Uh, and unfortunately, we didn't find anything today. But what we were able to do was kind of check, you know, some locations off the list and know that, you know, he's not there. However, we still have a lot of mountain to search. There's still a lot of mines out there that need to be gone through. Um, and so we're going to go back out. Uh, we do want to get a little more information, well, as much information as we possibly can from everybody out there. Uh, so we might start talking to some people in Montello to try to get a little more idea of, you know, what they knew about this Jim Brenner guy and whether or not, you know, they think he was the guy that did it. And if he did do it, where he might have put uh, Dylan or, you know, what areas he used to travel. I know that uh, the guys that we've spoken with out there said that Jim used to brag about, you know, having bunkers in those mountains. And he would talk about, you know, having having you know spaces out there uh don't know what that means don't know if that necessarily means again we don't even know if he's the one that killed dylan um there's just so many unanswered questions it's so frustrating but the good news is we got the time we got the resources we got the manpower and we've got the uh desire you know the gumption to go out there and continue to try to help dylan's family and see what we can do to find him so uh, stay tuned for more information on that as we continue to put the pieces together uh interview more people talk to different people about uh all the crazy stuff that uh, uh is going on out there and what people have heard and said and done and Buckle up because this story just gets crazier every single time we dive into it. So hope you guys enjoyed. And if you do know anything about uh, Dylan uh, or any other missing person that you would like us to look into or, you know, recovery or anything that you feel like we would be good at that we could help with kind of in or around Utah, surrounding states, hit us up, send me an email, info at heavydsparks.com. We want to hear from you. And if we can help, we definitely will. So hit us up.